Hello there and welcome back to my channel. In case you didn't know, you can use a standard printer like one you probably have at home to print large posters that you can then display in your classroom. And FYI, I eventually ate second grade and I was the biggest kid in class. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. Now we are gonna be printing a PDF file. So if your file is any other format, such as Google Docs or Google Slides, or even an image like a JPEG or a PNG, you are first going to need to export it to a PDF or convert it to a PDF. In case you missed my last video, I showed you step-by-step -step how to create a digital anchor chart in Google Slides. So if you have not already checked that out, be sure to use the link down in the description box. I'm gonna use this example file in order to export it as a PDF. So with the Google Slides open, I'm gonna to come to File, hover over Download, and then I'm gonna select PDF Document. This is going to download it to my computer, and you will notice I have my download bar down here. I want to open this PDF in Adobe Acrobat. If you do not have Adobe Acrobat, you can download their reader for free. So I will link that for you down in the description box. But instead of opening the PDF from here, if I click, this is going to open it as a new tab on my computer, which is not what I want because the print settings are a little bit different. So instead, I'm going to come to my downloads and double click in order to open it in Adobe Acrobat. Now I'm gonna actually show you two different ways to print poster size. The first way is using a quote unquote standard eight and a half by 11 or 11 by eight and a half size file. The second way will be how to customize the size of the file in order to get a specific poster size. But this example digital anchor chart that I have is an eight and a half by 11 size. So we're gonna start with that example. We're gonna click the print button or you can go to file and then select print. Now, the main setting we need to change is under page sizing and handling. We wanna select poster. By default, it probably selected size for you. So if you see fit, actual size, shrink oversized pages, come up to the top and click poster. Now, over on the right-hand side, it's gonna show me what my scale is, how many pages it's gonna print on, and then what the final size will be. Since I am printing on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, they're all going to be ratios of those sizes. So right now it is printing on two pages and they will be landscape style, even though the final poster is portrait. And it's giving me a final size of 11 by 17 inches. I can print on as many pages as I want and make this poster as large as I want but I would say the most common is to print it on four pieces of paper. So I'm gonna increase my tile scale to just 150% for now. And you will notice it has now adjusted to four pages, making a total poster size of 17 by 22 inches. However, I still have some white area around the edge. That means I can continue to make it larger until it goes on to more pages. So let's adjust our tile scale to 175%. That has filled in more of that space, but I still have a little bit more. Let's get, you know, a little bit greedy. Let's go 180. We're still good. Let's try 185. Okay, now you will notice it has gone on to six pages. If I want to, I could totally print it on six pages, but if I want to keep it to four, that means I need to decrease that tile scale. So let's try 184. Nope. 183. Nope. <laughs> 182. No, 181. There we go. Jackpot. So that is as large of a scale as I can make it and still have it fit on four pages. I always leave the overlap at the default, which is five thousandths of an inch, I believe, <laughs> but you can adjust it if needed. I've always found that that default works well for me. I personally do not check the cut marks or labels or tile only large pages, but you can play around with those settings and see if you need them. Keep in mind though, if you choose cut marks, you're probably gonna have to decrease that scale size in order to still make it fit. But I'm gonna unselect it, 
And from here, I am ready to print and then assemble my poster. But before we do that, I do wanna show you how this would look just a little bit different if you wanna customize it to get a standard poster size. Now, when I say standard poster size, I mean, if you go to a Staples or an Office Depot and you ask them to print a poster, they typically have these specific sizes, such as 12 inches by 18 inches or 18 inches by 24 inches, 24 by 36 inches. And it may be different for you if you're not in the US, but you can actually pre-create your file or your poster that you're wanting to print to be one of those sizes. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna open up a new Google Slides. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my themes and I'm also going to delete those text boxes just so I have a clean slate. In order to change the size, I'm gonna to come to File, scroll down to Page Setup, and then where it says Widescreen, I'm gonna select Custom. From here, I can type in that size that I want. So let's say that 24 by 36 inch size, so two feet by three feet. I'm gonna click Apply, and it's gonna resize my file to be that size. I'm, just for the sake of making it easy, I'm gonna insert a rectangle and we're just gonna resize it to take up, you know, most of the screen. That looks good. Make sure it's centered. Okay, let's make it like a thicker border just so we can see it better. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna put example poster two. <laughs> Super specific title. And let's go ahead and download that as a PDF as well. Once again, I don't wanna click it from my browser. Instead, I want to come to my downloads and open it within Adobe Acrobat. Okay, so now when I click on print and it already selected poster because that was the last thing I had selected, I can leave my tile scale at 100% and that's going to ensure that it prints out as a 24 by 36 poster. Now you will notice the actual size is a little bit bigger. So it is 25 and a half by 44 inches because again, it has to keep that eight and a half by 11 ratio of the standard size piece of paper that I am printing on. It's gonna take a total of 12 pages. Once I assemble these and I cut off that white space, the actual poster size will be 24 by 36 inches. So that might be a little bit easier for you if you're wanting to create a poster a specific size, you could do it this way. But if you're using a file you already have created, the first way might be a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and print off that first example poster and then we will come back together and assemble it. So the first step when you're assembling your poster is to align your pages so that you have them in the right order. So this is like my bottom right corner and then I have my bottom left corner and then my top two here. You will notice each one of these has a little bit of a border and specifically these top two have a little bit of a wider border. It's fine. We're going to be cutting, but we only are going to be cutting two of these. We're not going to be cutting all of them because if we trim all of them, then we have nothing to glue together. <laughs> so personally, I always really like to cut opposite corners. So either these two or these two, it doesn't really matter that way. I just feel like they come together better versus choosing two on top of each other or two next to each other. So I'm gonna choose these two that we are going to cut and I'm gonna select this first one. Of course, you could use a paper cutter or you could use scissors. Okay, we're gonna use my paper cutter. <laughs> so I'm going to be trimming the bottom part and then also the side part and I'm using where the ink cuts off as my guide. So I'm going to just line it up so that where that ink ends is where it will cut. And now we're gonna do the side. So again, I'm just using where the ink left off as my guide. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna return it to its spot and I'm gonna take this one. And same thing, I'm just trimming the side and the top. Okay, let's remove the paper cutter. So now, if I kind of line these up and I'll adjust them later, you will notice that this is gonna line up perfectly 
with that, this is gonna be just a little bit underneath, like so, so that they line up. And then this one is going to fill in the rest here. So it looks a little janky right now, but it's going to look much better when we get it all assembled. Now, you can obviously use a glue stick in order to attach them. In my experience, because it's such a small area, as soon as I put the glue on, I feel like it's dried by the time I'm trying to attach it. So my preference is actually just to use tape. This is clear, transparent tape. And I'm gonna start by assembling these bottom two, just like so. And I'm just lining them up using, you know, where the ink is. And, okay, that looks pretty good. Let's adjust it a little bit. We're just gonna hold it. I'm gonna put a piece of tape down here. And then we're gonna put, okay, we're gonna put one kind of in the middle. And then we'll put one up here at the top as well. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, as I go to start assembling them, I will notice like this one is going to assemble fine. And then this one, this is gonna go underneath, but I have this little tiny corner. So what I'm gonna do is trim just a little bit of this like middle part right here. So I'm just gonna cut, cut, and then I'm just gonna kind of cut at an angle so that it's off. So I can still attach it here but it's not gonna, I'm not gonna run into any trouble on this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and align this top piece here. And once again, we're just gonna get it nice and lined up. And then we're gonna use our tape. So I'm gonna have a piece of tape ready this time so that as soon as I get it, I'm good to go. That looks really good. So let's smack it down with a piece of tape. Beautiful. And once again, we'll go middle and then we'll go edge. Okay. And now we have our final piece, which is going to sit on top of this extra piece and this extra piece. So it's gonna fit in right like that. Don't move it, don't move it. And this one's tricky, because you gotta watch not only the bottom, but also the top to make sure it's aligned. And this is also the one that I did the worst job cutting. <laughs> So we're just kind of setting ourselves up for disaster. Okay, that looks good. Okay, all right, just commit to it, Michelle. Let's put that piece of tape down. And then let's go ahead and secure this. Perfect. Okay, get a middle one here. Get a side one here. Good enough, well, you know, I warned you, it's not gonna be perfect. And get that. And then we'll get one more up at the top. Get it nice and tight. There we go. Okay. So now we have our large poster. And obviously right now it's just being held together by some little pieces of tape. My best suggestion is to then run this through a laminator. Usually I'm not a fan of the big school laminators because the lamination is kind of thin and it ends up peeling over time. But obviously for something like this, you can't run it through your own personal laminator. It's not going to fit. So those large laminators will do. If your school does not have one, you can use laminators at stores like Lakeshore Learning, other teacher stores, and then I think maybe even office stores have them as well. But it's pretty cheap. It's like, I don't know, like 50 cents a foot or something like that. But once you run it through a laminator, then it is 100% all together as one big piece. If you don't have a laminator available, I suggest flipping it over and then retaping these different areas on the back just to help kind of reinforce it. But that is it. That is how you can print a regular file on a standard printer and make a large poster to hang up in your classroom. As I mentioned, if you want the tutorial video on how to create this digitally, I will have that link for you down in the description box, as well as if you are looking for a set of pre-made anchor charts or notes pages for your students and you teach upper elementary math, sorry, that's all I have available right now. Math is hard. Be sure to check out the link in the description box because I do have those available in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. 
But I hope that you enjoyed this video. I do have another video coming with more in-depth information on digital anchor charts, including some other ways that you can print them and use them with your students. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. While you're at it, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.